In this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can use Surecart on a primary domain and also on a subdomain. There's a couple of very particular nuances to this setup that I'm going to walk you through with respect to how Surecart works, as well as giving users access on a subdomain. There's an order of operations and a few associations that we have to make. Maybe on your primary domain, you have an add to cart feature where you're adding eBooks and courses and templates and things to a cart and the user checks out using Surecart and you want to fulfill and move all of that data over to your subdomain. I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step how to do that. The key to understanding all of this is to understand that all of your products, orders, customers, subscriptions, coupons, forms, everything that you build in Surecart is going to be on any website that you connect your Surecart account to. So if I have my Surecart account on my primary domain and I go to Surecart products, I'm going to see all of my products. If I were to click into one of them and click edit, and I were to see the photo and the pricing options and all of that, that is going to be on any website that I connect to my Surecart account. That's what it means to be headless. There's just one small hiccup in this setup and it has to do with your customers. Your customer data comes over, but their accounts do not. That means if you're going to fulfill something for a customer, like say granting them access to one of your great courses or your membership, you have to know who they are when they log into your website. And it's not enough to simply create an account for them. There's an order of operations to a user getting created and that user's data being associated with their Surecard account. To make that connection between our primary domain and our subdomain, we're going to use Sure Triggers because Sure Triggers is so deeply integrated with Surecart. And the great thing is, if you're a Surecart customer, you automatically have access to Sure Triggers. I believe you just need to be on one of the plans that comes with it. Every video I get asked which plan I recommend, and I recommend the business plan at the minimum. And that's because you get order bumps, subscription saver, which is amazing. You get Sure Triggers Pro, which is what we were just talking about. You gotta have that. You're gonna get upsells. If you're running a business, you need to be on the business plan. So step one is to make sure that you have Surecart installed, but here's what I recommend. I recommend you install it on your subdomain first and have your subdomain be the site that's associated with your Surecart account as the main site for the account. That's because we want all of the links and the emails to point people back to our subdomain. And then you can go ahead and install it on your primary domain. You can install it on a hundred domains, it doesn't matter. You just need to make sure that your subdomain is the first one because that's what's going to bring everyone back here where you're going to fulfill the product. Now we're going to come into Sure Triggers and build our workflow. To start off our workflow, it's going to be a trigger and that's going to be a trigger from Surecart. We're going to select Purchase Created and we're going to select a connection. The connection is basically your Sure Triggers account. So you'll select your Sure Triggers account that you've connected and then you'll go to Product and you're going to select the product that's going to trigger this to happen. Next, you're going to click fetch data so that we have something to work with. You're going to click the plus to add another action and that's going to be WordPress. And then you're going to select WordPress and you're going to select the event that we need to create and or update a user. You need to connect your multiple WordPress sites to Sure Triggers. That's very easy to do. You just go to apps, add WordPress and connect your site. Now we need to select where we are going to create and update that user. And we're going to choose whatever site we, they weren't on when they completed the checkout. So in our example we've been running with, they were on our main site, they purchased a product or multiple products, and we want to send that data for that user and create that user over on our subdomain. So we're going to choose our subdomain website, and then we're going to start filling out these required fields. These stacked circles over here for this dynamic content, that's what we're going to use to insert the data. These are a helpful tool to help us find the placeholders for the data that goes into these fields. For username, I like to insert the customer's name. So I'll click into the search field, search for name and insert the code. Here we go. I like to just choose customer name and there it is customer.name inside of the curly brackets. For the customer's email, we'll click the three circles. We'll search for email and I'll add in the customer's email there. That's customer.email contained within the squiggly brackets, curly brackets, whatever you want to call them. First name and last name are also pretty easy. You just click in customer first name and the same goes for the last name. You just search for name, customer last name. Okay, there we go. We're going to leave password blank because our users will automatically be able to log in with a link from their email and then they can set their own password. For role, it is required. I do just like to set this to Surecart customer 
why not? And I like to check this box to add the role in case they already exist. I don't know if that's required, but it makes me feel good when I check it. Now, the key to making all of this work, this is creating the user on our subdomain in this case. However, what it's not doing is associating that WordPress user that we're creating with our Surecart customer data that is already there because Surecart is headless. So we need to click add user meta, and this is where all of the real magic happens. Surecart stores their customer data in a meta key called SC for Surecart underscore customer underscore IDs. That's IDS. And the meta value can be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to walk you through it. First, do a left curly bracket and then quote. And if you're in test mode, you'll put test. And if you're doing this for live mode, you'll do live. We'll do test mode for now. So we'll do test, put that in quotes, then do colon and then put a quote. And then we do another left curly bracket and do customer dot ID, right curly bracket, close quote, right curly bracket. So here we have inside of curly brackets, we have test in quotes, colon, and then we have customer dot ID inside curly brackets, inside of quotes, all contained in the curly brackets. And again, for test mode, you would put test for live mode here, you would put live. To make this easy for you, I'm making these something that you can cut and paste. Just look below the video and you'll be able to copy those. Then you'll want to click test action and this will associate or create the user on your site, but you do want to click test action and that should pair everything together. If you see a red exclamation point here, it means that you did not complete testing the action. So you'll go back in and click test. Now you can technically stop there and your user will be created on your other site and they will be associated with the Surecart customer purchase data. So that when you go in, if that user were to log in through a link in their email, automatically magically logged in, their user data would be associated with their Surecart account. Hey, Future Doug here. I wanted to drop in another update on this. While I was editing the video, a couple people asked some questions on Facebook about uh, this whole setup. And I figured I would add a step that somebody asked, which is, can you delete the users on site A, which would be the primary domain in this example, after you create the user on site B? And the answer is yes. So we created our user and we updated their meta key on the subdomain. Now all we have to do is add another action. And we're also going to do a WordPress action. We're going to select that. And then we're going to just scroll down and do remove user right here, and then select the connection, select your primary site. So let's pretend this was my primary site for the user email that we are removing. We are going to do a search here uh, for the customer email that drops in the customer dot email in the curly braces here. That's the, uh, this smart dynamic tag that we need to drop in. And then for delete user data, it says what should be done with the content owned by this user. This is just your standard WordPress thing. You can just simply say attribute to admin, delete all content, things like that. In this case, delete all content is totally fine because it's just a user created by Surecart. So I would just say delete all content. Um, you can test your action. I think it requires you to do that. Um, so my recommendation here just like with the rest of this setup is to run a test purchase yourself so that you're using your own data rather than bouncing around one of your Surecart customers onto your different sites. Uh, but yeah, you would just delete their data here. And then let's say that you had even a third website and you're like, okay, I've got my primary domain where I do all my add to cart and selling. I have my subdomain where I do all of my membership. Maybe you've got Forever Apprentice or LearnDash or whatever. And let's say you have a third site. And on your third site, maybe you do something like Fluent CRM. So you could at that point add them to a tag here. You could search for Fluent CRM and select Fluent CRM and then just select add or update a content. And then right here where it says select a connection, this would just be where you select your third site. So let's pretend I had email.convology.com in my case. I would just select that site. So here under custom email, we know that's a uh, left curly bracket customer.email, right curly bracket. And then you scroll down and you choose whether they're subscribed or pending, choose your list, choose your tags, test your action and save. This would also be where you wanted to add additional things. Let's say you were, you had LearnDash on your subdomain. So we create our user in order to associate their data with their Surecart customer. And that's a WordPress step we need to do here. That's the whole point of this video. 
and then we removed the user, we added them to a, another site in this example for Fluent CRM. But then at this point, we could, yes, also come in here and search for LearnDash, or we could search API and send a, a API call over to, or in this case, a webhook over to Thrive Automator. Whatever tool you're using, you could add them to your subdomain or another site into your courses. And then the nice thing is the user exists right here. So it makes pairing the data super, super easy. All right, that's it for future Doug. All right, back to past Doug. We're going to take this one step further and assume that we're doing something like adding the user to a LMS like Thrive Apprentice so that they can get access to maybe a course or a workshop or maybe something else like a membership level on your site. The easiest way to do that is to go to Thrive Automator on your website and click add new and choose incoming webhook. And you're going to get a URL that you want to copy and you want to come back over to sure triggers, click the plus symbol, click API and then new API and then select post for the payload type, select JSON for the endpoint URL, paste in the webhook that we just copied, scroll down until you find parameters, check the box to add parameters. We're going to add a parameter and that parameter is going to be email. And we're going to click on again, the circle to get our code here, we'll do email. And that just drops in our curly brackets with customer.email. And then you can go ahead and click test action and then click save. Back over in Thrive Automator, we're going to put the same thing that we put for key on the other side, which is email. But here on our value, we're going to drop this down and select dynamic mapping and choose email and then click done. Next, we need to know who to associate with this email that we just received. And we're associating that with a WordPress account. What's really cool is we've just created that WordPress account on this same site. And yes, this is the subdomain, of course, where your courses are residing. So we'll find create user. You don't need to do anything else other than if you want, keep their user role as subscriber or you can do Surecart customer. Let's just click sure cart customer for fun, then click done. And now that we know who they are and we've associated them with their WordPress user data, we'll add another action, choose apprentice, grant access to a product, click into the field and then select whatever product we want to give them access to on our website. Upper left-hand corner, give this a name and then click save and finish. And that concludes taking a customer who purchases on our main or primary domain giving them an account on our subdomain where we fulfill all of our courses and downloads and community, things like that. And it associates the data with Surecart so that it's paired nicely and automatically because Surecart has the ability to click a button to do this, but it's not automated, at least as of the time I'm making this video. So by associating that metadata, now Surecart knows who this WordPress user is, validates them, all that data is synced up. And we add that extra step at the very end to grant them access to something in Thrive Apprentice associated with what they purchased. And so all those things come together and our users can now be on the subdomain and all of their access works. All right, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free as always, leave them down below and I'll do my best to get to them or check out the Convology community where all these types of questions can get answered much faster and individualized to you. I'll leave a link for that in the description as well.